What's up, YouTube? Before I get into the video, let me remind you that if you like my content, please hit that like and subscribe button. And also, if you feel the need to support me, hit me up on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Uncommon Ramen, capital U, capital R. Uh, I do all this in my free time, so any amount of support can help me bring more of this content to you more often. All right, we are taking a look at a Kytheon Hero of Acros deck tech here. Um, this was my excuse to do a mono white deck and more importantly a mono white super friends deck and more importantly than, than that a mono white oops all Gideon's deck. This is going to be everything Gideon and I'm not even joking so we're just going to jump into this and see what I got. Uh, we're going to start here with Kytheon or Kythian. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Kythian. It could be Kythian. Uh, anyway, Hero of Akros. He, uh, costs one white, is a two white, uh, two one body. Uh, at the end of combat, if Kythian, Hero of Akros, and at least two other creatures attack this combat, exile Kythian and return to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control. Uh, for two and a white, uh, Kythian gains indestructible until end of turn. He's a two one body, so being able to make him indestructible is pretty necessary if you want to get that, uh, trigger to flip him. He will turn into Gideon, Battleforged, uh, Planeswalker with three loyalty on ETB. Um, for plus two, you can have up to one target creature and opponent controls attack Gideon during its controller's next turn, if able. Uh, for its plus one, until your next turn, target creature gains indestructible, untap that creature. And then for zero, until end of turn, Gideon Battleforged becomes a 4-4 human soldier creature uh, with indestructible that is still a planeswalker and then prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. So there's going to be a lot of that. Um, a lot of the Gideons turn into soldiers. There's a couple that don't, which is weird, but it is what it is. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of soldier, soldier tribal going on in here too. And just, in general, a fun load of Gideons doing a whole bunch of Gideon things, which is relatively ineffective. So this should be a great deck, right? Anyway, moving on. That is our Kithian, Hero of Acros. That is our commander. He only costs one white, so you can run him out pretty quickly. Um, flipping him into the other side is the hard part, but, you know, is what it is. We are going to look at creatures first. Starting with our Arena Rector, um, this is a must-have if you're going to do any kind of white deck that has Super Friends in it. Uh, for three and a white, it's a 1-2. Uh, when it dies, you can exile it. If you do search your library for a Planeswalker card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Um, you can put just any Planeswalker onto the battlefield, and you don't have to pay for it just for this dying. Um, it is the um, Planeswalker version of the uh, Enchantment one that... Uh, I can't remember the name of. Something Rector. Academy Rector. It's the uh, Planeswalker version of Academy Rector. All right, next up we have Baird, uh, Steward of Argive. Uh, two and two white for a two four. It has vigilance, and creatures can attack you or planeswalkers you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. It's kind of like a ghostly prison, um, but it's not. Um, but it does kind of protect your planeswalkers a little bit too. Uh, it just forces your opponents to have to pay a little bit extra tax in order to swing into you or your planeswalkers. Next up, we have Captain the Watch, 4 and 2 white for a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance. Other soldiers you control uh, get plus 1, plus 1, and have Vigilance. Uh, when Captain the Watch enters the battlefield, put 3 1-1 one, one soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. It's an anthem. It gives uh, um, Vigilance, which is really great. Um, and it's sea soldiers, so a lot of the uh, Gideons, when they turn into creatures, will be uh, buffed by this. Next up, we have Defiler of Faith, 3 and 2 white for a 5-5 five, five with Vigilance. Uh, as, an as an additional cost to cast white permanent spells, you may pay 2 life. Those spells cost 1 white less to cast if you paid life this way. This effect reduces only the amount of white mana you pay, and whenever you cast a white permanent spell, uh, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. So uh, we get Phyrexian mana on all white symbols uh, just because of this, and we get soldier tokens for casting white cards. Really cool. Pretty awesome. Uh, next up we have Jeru, 
with eyes open, uh, three into white for a 4-3 with vigilance. When Jero with eyes open enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a Planeswalker card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Uh, if a source would deal damage to a Planeswalker you control, prevent one of that damage. He uh, helps protect your Planeswalkers, he tutors a Planeswalker, and he's a 4-3 body with vigilance. I like it. I think it's a good one. Next up, we have Gideon's Avenger. I wasn't kidding when I said we're going to use all of the Gideon cards. I'm, I might be missing a couple, uh, especially off-color ones. We can't use those, obviously. But if it's white, I, I'm trying to, I tried to use all of them. Uh, Gideon's Avenger. One and two white for a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, when a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, put a plus one, plus one counter on Gideon's Avenger. Plus, this one's just good. I mean, come on. It gets bigger every time they tap something. Is it a creature? Tap creatures. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. It still gets bigger every time an opponent taps a creature. Uh, Gideon's Company. Three and a white for a 3-3. Three, three. When you gain life, put two plus one plus one counters on Gideon's Company. And for three and a white, you can put a loyalty counter on target Gideon Planeswalker. So we get to support our Gideon Planeswalkers, and every time we gain life, we get plus one plus one counters on this. Pretty cool. Next up, Gideon's Lockkeeper. For one white, it's a 1-1. One, one. You can pay one white and tap it uh, to tap target creature. I, I, you know, these abilities are better in limited formats and obviously better in 60 card constructed formats, but Gideon's Lawkeeper being able to tap down something massive on the board uh, is still a pretty good value, in my opinion, so it's still decent. Grateful Apparition. For one and a white, we have a 1-1 one, one with flying. Whenever Grateful Apparition deals combat damage to a player, Planeswalker, player or Planeswalker, proliferate. Uh, proliferating uh, proliferates also the loyalty counters on your planeswalkers, so you can't go without it. We got Keeper of the Accord for three and a white. You have a three, four. Uh, this guy is very versatile and very helpful in here. Um, at the beginning of each an opponent's end step, if that player controls more creatures than you, you get to create a one, one white uh, soldier creature token. Uh, at the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a basic planes card, put that card onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. Uh, I think one of the biggest issues that white generally has is ramping, and so this gives you some ramp, assuming your opponents have more lands than you. So you can't go wrong, especially if you didn't end up going first. Knight of the White Orchid. For two white, this is a 2-2 two -two with first strike when it enters the battlefield. Uh, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you search your library for a planes card, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle. Again, it's the we, we have trouble ramping. There's two things that white has troubles with. Ramping and drawing cards. So, we gotta do what we gotta do. Then we have Kithian's Irregulars. For two and two white, this is a 4-3 with Renown 1, which means when this creature deals combat damage to a player, if it is not re Renowned, it gets a plus one, plus one counter, and becomes Renowned. So it can become a 5-4. Uh, and you can pay two white to tap target creature. This is a more expensive version of the Law Keepers, but uh, it's still interesting. It's not that good. <laughs> it's in here for flavor. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, we got Mangara the Diplomat. For three and a white, you have a 2-4 with lifelink. Whenever an opponent attacks creature attacks with creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or planeswalkers you control, you get to draw a card. When an opponent casts their second spell each turn, you get to draw a card. Mongara is really cool because um, aggro decks are pretty big about attacking with more than one creature, which means if they do swing at you, you're probably going to draw a card. But the fact that you, on second uh, spell you get to draw a card and there's like no tax to that or anything, it just you draw the card is pretty good. Um, I like this one a lot. Uh, it's a toss up for me between that one and. Um, Gosh, what's the the white human metal dude that uh, draws cards on their if they cast non creature? I can't remember what it is. I like Mangara. All right, next up we have Myrel Shield of Argive three and a white for a three four. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Uh, whenever Myrel Shield of Argive attacks. Uh, create X11 colorless soldier artifact creature tokens where X is the number of soldiers you control. Um, there, this is in here in, in place of the Grand Abolisher. Um, 
I couldn't find a way that that sat right with me to fit both of them in here. And my rel, uh, even though it costs two more, uh, its ability is a little bit more relevant to the deck, um, being that we're doing like a soldier tribal-ish type thing as well as being the super friends. So my rel has the same ability. It's a, I think it's a little bit more powerful, I believe, uh, but I might be wrong about that. Either way, uh, my rel has a very similar ability as the Grand Abolisher. Um, so my rel made the cut. Next up, we have Rescue Retriever for three and two white. This is a 3-3 three, three with flash. When Rescue Retriever enters the battlefield, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on each other soldier you control, and you prevent all damage that would be dealt to other attacking soldiers you control. Um, so a lot of the soldiers that we are going to be creating are going to be tokens. Uh, so giving them plus one, plus one counters is going to help um, just raise their power and make them more threatening. Uh, also, the preventing the damage to them means they last longer on the table. I like that. Next up, we have Sun Titan. For four and two white, you have a 6-6 six, six with Vigilance. When Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This also sees lands. Just FYI, there's a lot of people who just don't realize that. Next up, we have Thalia's Lancers. This is three and two white for a 4-4 four, four with first strike. When Thalia's Lancers enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a legendary card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Uh, this says legendary card, so it doesn't necessarily mean permanent and that means it can hit planeswalkers it can hit spells legendary spells there are some in here um, but it can also hit some of the creatures that that are in here as well obviously it's in here to hit the planeswalkers but if necessary this thing is actually quite versatile and then lastly we have verge rangers for two and a white this guy's a three three with the first strike you may look at the top card of your library at any time as long as an opponent controls more lands than you uh, you may play lands from the top of your library um, again just in case we fall behind. White is pretty notorious for that. There's a lot of ways of fixing that in this deck, um, but that is the creatures. Next up, we're going to take a look at instants. The instants are pretty typical in here. A lot of it is spot removal. We'll start with our generous gift. Uh, destroy target permanent. It's control against a 3-3 elephant creature token. Um, it's just beast within, but a different color. Uh, we got Gideon's Phalanx for five and two white. Um, you get to put four 2-2 two, two white knight creature tokens with vigilance onto the battlefield. If you have spell mastery, which means if you have two or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, uh, creatures you control uh, gain indestructible until end of turn. It's a very expensive card, but again, it's in here for the flavor. Uh, we got Gideon's Repro Reproach. Uh, for one and a white, Gideon's Reproach deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Um... Uh, it's, again, spot removal, and it's flavorful. We got Gideon's Sacrifice for one white. Choose a creature or planeswalker you control. All damage that would be dealt this turn uh, to you and permanence you control is dealt to the chosen permanent instead. Um, so aggro decks are probably going to be the biggest weakness of this deck. So being able to focus the aggro towards one single thing is actually really helpful, especially if we focus it towards... Kithian, because Kithian, you can just recast. Um, and Kithian has an ability that forces your opponents, well, force at least one of your opponent's creatures to attack it. But this just kind of forces them to attack with everything towards that one thing. And that could buy you a turn, and that could also just end the game. Who knows? Next up, we have Gideon's Triumph for one and a white. Target opponent sacrifices a creature that attacked or blocked this turn. If you control a Gideon Planeswalker, that player sacrifices two of those creatures instead. Uh, again, spot removal. It's not the greatest spot removal. Uh, sacrifice for uh, gives them the uh, benefit of choosing, but if they didn't have a lot of creatures in the first place, um, that could be very helpful. Next up, we have Ignite the Beacon for four and a white. Search your library for up to two Planeswalker cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. It's just a, a tutor, but it's a pretty big tutor. Uh, path of or path to exile for one white remove target creature from the game uh its controller may search their library for a basic land card put that card onto the battlefield tap then shuffle and then finally source plowshares exile target creatures control gains life equal to its powers power all right next up is sorceries the sorceries are a little bit uh spread here uh we have call the gate watch for two and a white you search your library for a planeswalker card reveal it put it in your hand then shuffle your library it's a little bit cheaper than the ignite but it also searches for one less planeswalker we got collective effort for one and two white you can escalate this by tapping an untapped creature uh, every time you escalate it you can choose a new mode uh, destroy target creature with power four or greater uh, destroy target enchantment 
or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature uh, target player controls. I like the versatility of this. Um, it's not hard to get that tap an untapped creature you control thing going, um, but the versatility on this is extremely useful, especially considering, like I said, we're we're well. I am specifically um, putting myself in a um, unideal position by taking just Gideon cards, so this is it, it's helpful. Next up, we have Deploy the Gatewatch, four into white. Uh, look at the top seven cards of your library. You can put two Planeswalker cards from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest onto the bottom of your library uh, in a random order. Uh, Deploy the Gatewatch is a conditional tutor that has some pretty big abilities because it just puts them right onto the battlefield if you're lucky enough to hit two. Uh, you shouldn't have too much of an issue, but I have whiffed on this before, and I've also only hit one on this before, so uh, yeah. Next up, we have Gideon's Battlecry for two and two white. Put a plus one plus one, counter, plus, plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. You may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Gideon the Oathsworn. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Uh, if you search your library, shuffle it. Uh, the plus one plus one counter on each of your creatures is already good. Um, but then we get a tutor. Granted, it's a tutor for a very specific um planeswalker and it's not necessarily the best planeswalker uh we're playing an oops all gideon we just want to get gideons in play anyway next up we have marshall coup for uh x and two white create x one one white soldier creature tokens if x is five or more destroy all other creatures um nine times out of ten you're not going to have a lot of creatures in play anyway if you have any at all and so this is just going to create a board for you protect your planeswalkers and also destroy all your opponent's stuff i don't see a downside to that Next up, we have Mass Calcify for 5 and 2 white. Destroy all non-white creatures. This is supposed to be a one-sided board wipe. Unfortunately, if your opponents are playing anything with white in it, then it can turn into a not-so-one-sided board wipe, but at least somewhat board wipe. Uh, next up, we have Urza's Ruinous Blast, which is also supposed to be a one-sided board wipe in here. More importantly, this is the card that I was talking about that Thalia's uh, Lancers can search up because it is legendary. Uh, Urza's Ruinous Blast is four and a black, or sorry, four and a black, four and a white, uh, but you cannot cast it uh, unless you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. You exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. Uh, this doesn't hit planeswalkers because all planeswalkers are legendary, um, and it basically is just a one-sided, well, again, if they have legends, then they're not getting hit by it, but uh, especially those legends matter decks. With Lord of the Rings out now, I don't know. Anyway, it's supposed to be one-sided. All right, next up is Artifacts. Starting with Blackblade Reforged. Cost two, equips for three on a legendary creature, equips for seven otherwise, and the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. It's flavor, let's be honest. Gideon wields this more than once. Um, also, it just makes something massive. Um... You can throw this on a, a Gideon Planeswalker after you turn it into a creature to swing in for major damage. Um, downside being, obviously, when it turns back into a Planeswalker, it drops the equipment. But, you know, it's still a very cool thing. Next up, we have Cage Suns, Mana Doubler. Um, when it enters the battlefield, choose a color. Creatures of the chosen color get plus one, plus one. And whenever you tap a land, um, whenever a land's ability causes you to add one mana of the chosen color, you add one extra of that. Next up, we have Endless Atlas for two. Uh, you can pay two and tap it to draw a card, but you can only activate that if you control three or more lands of the same name, so planes. Uh, again, we need to draw cards. It's really difficult in white. Next up, we have Lu Luxir, Giada's Gift. Uh, for one, it uh, equips to a Planeswalker for one. Otherwise, it equips for three. Uh, the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each counter on it. Uh, equipped permanent isn't a Planeswalker and is a creature in addition to its other types. Um, it still says loyalty abilities can still be activated, which is really important. Um, so we can put this on any of our Planeswalkers. It'll get plus one, plus one for each loyalty counter on it. It can still activate its loyalty abilities, um, but it's now a creature as well. Um, it does make it susceptible to spot removal, but Planeswalkers are already kind of susceptible to Planeswalkers these days anyway, or uh, uh, spot removal uh, these days anyway. Um, it equips the Planeswalkers for one, so there's incentive to doing so. Um, and it synergizes with the Gideon's ability to become indestructible and prevent combat damage to themselves, so it's just a good piece of equipment. Next up, we have Oketra's Monument. This is three uh, white creature spells you control 
or white creature spells you cast cost one less to cast, and whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with Vigilance. So we're creating knights, we're creating soldiers, we're creating warriors. Um, I will say the majority of things will, that are going to get created are going to be soldiers. Next up we have Pearl Medallion for two white spells you cast, cost one less to cast. We got Soul Ring, it costs one, you can tap it to add two. And then we got Chain Veil. I think this is the last one. This costs four. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't activate a loyalty ability of a Planeswalker this turn, you lose two life. And for four, you can tap it, and for each Planeswalker you control, you may activate one of its loyalty abilities once this turn, as though none of its loyalty abilities have been activated this turn. Uh, so you can activate their loyalty abilities twice. With Gideons, that's really important, because if we want the Gideons to be creatures, we have to use their loyalty abilities on most of them, which means if we want to use other abilities, we need to activate their abilities twice. So this is extremely useful. Also, there's another card in here that uh, allows us to activate our loyalty abilities a second time, or a another time as well. And with certain Gideons, that's actually pretty powerful. Three uses of their abilities is pretty good. All right, next up is enchantments. There's actually quite a few of these. Um, part of the reason behind that is because we're also running um, Sphere of Safety in here. Um, the more enchantments in here, the less likely your opponents are going to be able to attack you. So starting with Deification, this guy just came out. It's a super good card for this deck specifically. Um, it's good with super friends that have white in there, but this is like really specifically good for this mono white version that is all Gideons. So for one and a white, as Deification enters the battlefield, choose a Planeswalker type, and that's going to be its name. So Gideon, um, uh, why does it, Jace, uh, Ajani, um, Elspeth, you name it. Uh, planeswalkers you control of the chosen type have hexproof, so all of a sudden they can't be targeted. Uh, as long as you control a creature, if damage dealt to a planeswalker you control of a chosen type would result in all loyalty counters on it being removed, instead all but one of those counters are removed. That is incredible in this deck. Um, not to mention, uh, we have somebody in here that prevents up to one damage from a uh, planeswalker so that's pretty cool but there's also something in here that uh makes it with if you have this card in play and that card in play it makes it almost impossible to destroy a gideon at that point next up we have elspeth conquers death uh it's a saga for three and two white uh chapter one exile target permanent an opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater uh for chapter two non-creature spells your opponent's uh, cast costs two more to cast until your next turn and then for chapter three return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on a counter or a loyalty counter on it uh, just to reoccur uh, any planeswalkers that have died um, this is a fantastic card it should be included in any uh, super friends deck that has white in it then we got Elspeth's Talent. This is two and two white Enchant Planeswalker. The Enchanted Planeswalker has plus one, create three one one white soldier creature tokens. And whenever you activate a loyalty ability on Enchanted, on ability of Enchanted Planeswalker, creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain vigilance until end of turn. Um, I can't talk about how incredible that is. The first ability is the main ability of the best Elspeth in the game and the second ability just gives them a huge buff in vigilance which means they can attack and still block next up we have ghostly prison for two and two white creatures that can't can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature you they control that's attacking you sorry I can I can English um Again, the biggest downside to this deck is aggro decks. Aggro decks kind of just school this deck. So anything you can do to stop aggro decks from destroying you, you should have. Next up, we have Gideon's Intervention for two and two white. As Gideon's Intervention enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Your opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanents you control by sources of the chosen name. Okay, so this is Commander, and it's a singleton format. So 
the biggest thing you could probably call when you play this card is your opponent's commander, especially if they're playing an aggro commander. So I'm not saying choose their commander, but I'm saying choose their commander. Um, there are other things you could choose. If you know more about what's being played in their hand, you can try and stop combo pieces from happening, so on and so forth. Um, but at the end of the day, um, really, you should just choose their commander. All right, we have Gideon's Resolve for four and two, or four and a white. When Gideon's Resolve enters the battlefield, you may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Gideon Marshall Paragon. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Uh, if you search your library, shuffle it, and then creatures you control get plus one, plus one. It's just an anthem and a tutor. Uh, again, tutoring for a very specific Gideon. Next up, we have Land Tax. During your upkeep, if an opponent controls more land than you, you may search your library for up to three basic land cards, put them into your hand, and then shuffle your library. It's a great way to make it so you do not miss your land drops, and that is super good in a deck like this. Well, it's just super good in most decks, let's be honest. Uh, we got Oath of Gideon, two and a white. When Oath of Gideon enters the battlefield, uh, put two 1-1 one, one core ally, 1-1 one, one white core ally creature tokens onto the battlefield. Each planeswalker you control enters the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on it. I can't tell you how many times that has been so insanely useful to me. Um, but the core ally thing is kind of funny too, uh, because yes, that's another token that is not a soldier, a knight, or a uh, warrior. So, core ally. Next up, we have Smuggler's Share. This is two and a white. Uh, at the beginning of each end step, draw a card for each opponent who drew two or more cards this turn. Then create a treasure token for each opponent who had two or more lands. Enter the battlefield under their control this turn. Um, helps us draw cards, gets us treasure tokens if your opponents are ramping. Uh, just in general, really good card for this deck. Next up, we have Sphere of Safety. Creatures can't attack you or Planeswalkers you control unless, you're con unless their controller play pays X for each of those creatures where X is the number of enchantments you control. Um, and again, we're just protecting ourselves from the potential of threat to our Planeswalkers, but just in general, aggro decks in general. Next up, we have True Conviction. Three and three white. Creatures you control have Double Strike and Lifelink. Um, lifelink helps to bolster our life total from possibility of getting our butts kicked by aggro decks. Um, and the double strike just makes it so that we can close out the game much faster. Um, just a, it's a good enchantment in general. And then finally we have Urza Assembles the Titans, another saga for three and two white. Um, this one you can read ahead so you can choose which chapter it enters on. Uh, chapter one is Scry 4, then you may Reveal the top card of your library. If a plane, if it is a Planeswalker, um, put it into your hand. For Chapter 2, you may put a Planeswalker card with mana value 6 or less from your hand onto the battlefield. And then for Chapter 3, you may activate the uh, uh, loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers you control twice this turn rather than only once. Um, and again, when you uh, pair that with Chain Veil, you get three activations of your lo loyalty abilities. And there's some cards in here with three activations that can just really wreck the game. All right, so finally, we are looking at the Planeswalkers, our super friends. And as you can imagine, there aren't that many, or at least there aren't enough Gideons for it to be just Gideon, but we're going to start here with a Johnny Steadfast. This is three and a white, starts with four loyalty. It's plus one is until end of turn, up to one target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains first strike and vigilance and lifelink. Um, it's minus two is to put a plus one, plus, plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. And it's minus seven is you get an emblem with, if a source would deal damage to you or a planeswalker you control, prevent all but one, uh, of that damage. So if you get that emblem in play and you have, um, deification in play, your Gideon planeswalkers pretty much become impossible to kill um so this is this is where a johnny steadfast becomes a really big staple in this deck um not to mention the plus one plus one to all creatures and plus one or plus one loyalty counter to all planeswalkers that's very super frenzy so a johnny steadfast next up is bass Riquette. Uh, for one and two white, enters with three loyalty counters. It's plus one is to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, on up to one target creature. It gains indestructible until end of turn. 
Uh, it's minus two is whenever one or more non-token creatures attack this turn, create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. And then it's minus six is you get an emblem with at the beginning of your combat. On your turn, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. Uh, then put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control this card if it gets to its uh, Ultimate is actually crazy good and it gets out of hand very very quickly if your opponents don't do something about it um, It also means that after a board wipe you're still going to create a board because the emblem is going to create a soldier um, But beyond that it's a minus or minus two ability is very good if you can manage to uh, make a board state and its plus one isn't horrible either. Next up, we have Elspeth Knight Errant, two and two white, enters with four uh, loyalty counters. Uh, its plus one is to put a white soldier creature token onto the battlefield. Its other plus one is to create, or er, is to give target creature plus three, plus three, and it gains flying until end of turn. And then its minus eight is that you get an emblem that says artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and lands you control have indestructible. Um, you cannot let this Elspeth get to, if you're the opponent anyway, uh, eight. Uh, because if your opponent gets that emblem, it makes it so hard to deal with what's going on on the field. Um, it hits uh, everything but Planeswalkers, unfortunately. But creatures having indestructible means that they have blockers forever at that point. Elspeth Sun's Champion. This is the good Elspeth that I was talking about. Four and two white. Comes into play with four loyalty counters. Uh, probably the best Elspeth printed. Uh, for plus one, you get to create three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. For minus three, you get to destroy all creatures with power four or greater. And for minus seven, you get an emblem that says creatures you control. Uh, get plus two, plus two, and have flying. Um, this package is insane. Uh, for one, you get three soldier tokens. It's minus three is a board wipe to pretty much anything that that isn't your tokens, basically. And it's minus seven buffs the uh, creatures and gives them flying, which is insane, inv insane, insane evasion. Uh, Elspeth Sun's champion. Next up, we have Gideon Blackblade. We're going to start seeing all the Gideons at this point. For one and two white, it enters with four loyalty counters. This is one of the only Gideons that doesn't have to use an activation of its loyalty abilities to become a creature, because as long as it's your turn, Gideon Blackblade is a 4-4 human soldier creature uh, with indestructible and is still a planeswalker. You prevent all damage that would be dealt to Gideon Blackblade during your turn. Uh, plus one, uh, up to one other target creature you control, gains your choice of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Indestructible until end of turn, and minus six, exile, target, non-land permanent. Um, it's not truly the best Gideon in the whole entire world. Um, it's plus one is meh. It's minus six is pretty meh. Um, it does get around, um, indestructible, so it can be pretty good. Um, and it's, uh, passive ability to be a creature kind of just leads into what this deck is. Next up, we have Gideon Jura. Jura. For three and two white, enters the battlefield with six loyalty counters for plus two during, uh, target opponent's next turn, creatures that player controls, attack Gideon Jura if able, so he can sacrifice himself. Uh, for minus two, destroy target tapped creature, um, hits a uh, spot removal on something that's tapped, and for zero. Until end of turn, Gideon Jura becomes a 6-6 six, six human soldier creature that's still a planeswalker, prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. Um, so again, both of these uh, Gideons become soldiers, so they see soldier anthems. Next up, we have Gideon of the Trials. For one and two white, it enters the battlefield with three loyalty counters, plus one uh, until, end, until your next turn prevent all damage that target permanent would deal. For zero, until end of turn, Gideon of the Trials becomes a 4-4 four, four human soldier creature token with indestructible and that is still Planeswalker, and you prevent all damage that would be dealt to it this turn. Uh, for another zero, you get an emblem that says as long as you control a Gideon Planeswalker, you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. It's super important. This is probably one of the most important Gideons in the deck. Um, your commander is a Gideon if you can get it to turn over into a Gideon. Um, so therefore, as long as you can continuously keep a Gideon on the field and that emblem is in play, you just can't lose the game. So you just have to find the way at that point to win the game. Um, 
The other part of this is until the plus one until next turn prevent all damage that target permanent would deal is actually really useful. Um, for plus one, that's pretty good. Next up, we have Gideon, ally of Zendikar for two and two white. It is enters with four uh, loyalty counters. Its plus one is until end of turn. Gideon, ally of Zendikar, becomes a 5-5 human soldier ally creature with indestructible that's still planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to it this turn. Uh, for zero, you can put a 2-2 white knight ally creature token onto the battlefield. Yes, I know, it's not a soldier. Um, and for minus four, you get an emblem. Creatures you control get... Plus one, plus one. He, for minus four, just puts emblems out that are anthems. And you don't have to stop after you've put one in play. You can just keep putting more of those emblems in play, which means your creatures just get larger and larger every time. Um, so again, this is another one of those Gideons you don't want to keep on the table for too long. Uh, he also comes in as much like the first Gideon, bigger than all the rest of them that are coming as four fours he he likes to come in as a five five when he hits the battlefield we got gideon champion of justice for two and two white has four loyalty counters on etb uh plus one put a loyalty counter on gideon champion of justice for each creature target opponent controls for zero until end of turn gideon champion of justice becomes a human soldier creature with power and toughness equal to the number of loyalty counters on him and gains indestructible. He's still a planeswalker and prevent all damage dealt to him this turn. For minus 15, all other uh, exile all other permanents. This is a crazy good card. Um, this won me a game at one point in time because this ended up coming out uh, the turn that Urza assembles the Titans did its final ability while I had a chain veil in play. So I was able to activate the first ability two times and get him up to easily 15 loyalty counters so that I could do the exile all other permanents, uh, leaving Gideon Jura or Gideon champion of justice on the table and forcing my opponents to pretty much rebuild from scratch because this hits lands too. It says exile all other permanents that includes lands, uh, which meant that as long as Gideon was on the table, he was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually he was going to attack it and win. And even if he didn't, I think he had two loyalty counters on him. I could just attack for two every turn. Um, it was a really good uh, sweep at that point. Next up is Gideon Marshall Paragon. Uh, four and a white for a Planeswalker that enters with five loyalty counters. It's plus two is untap all creatures you control. Those creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's zero is until end of turn. Gideon Marshall Paragon becomes a 5-5 human soldier creature token with indestructible. That's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. Uh, and then it's minus 10 is creatures you control. Get plus two, plus two until end of turn. Tap all creatures your opponents control. So it's minus 10 is meant to be a, uh, a game ender. It's plus two is good if you have multiple combats. Otherwise, it's good for bringing blockers back up it's not a great card let's just be honest next up we have gideon the oath sworn for four and two white uh it enters with four loyalty counters its passive ability is whenever you attack with two or more non-gideon creatures put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures which is super good uh it's plus two is until end of turn gideon the oath sworn becomes a five five white soldier creature token that's still a planeswalker prevent all damage that was dealt to him this turn and then for minus nine exile gideon the oath swarm and uh, oath sworn and each creature your opponents control so it's a one-sided board wipe and that can actually be very useful okay we're down to the last two planeswalkers uh starting with grand master of flowers for two and two white um, the important part here is that as, as long as Grandmaster of Flowers has seven or more loyalty counters on him, he is a 7-7 seven, seven dragon god creature with flying and indestructible. So again, it just turns it into a creature. The whole idea here is that my planeswalkers are creatures. Um, for plus one, you can have target creature without first strike, double strike, or vigilance. Um, oh, sorry, target creature without first strike, double strike, or vigilance can't attack or block until your next turn which is kind of cool uh and it's other plus one is search your library for or and or graveyard for a card named monk of the open hand reveal it put it into your hand and then 
if you search your library this way, shuffle. Uh, we don't have any Monk of the Open Hand in here. Uh, we're really just banking off this first ability and proliferates and stuff like that so that we can turn him into a 7-7 Dragon God with Flying and Indestructible. And then finally, we have the Wanderer, the original Wanderer from uh, uh, War of the Spark. Uh, three and a white enters with five loyalty counters. It's um, passive says prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other planeswalkers you control forcing your opponents to have to attack your planeswalkers if they want to kill them or use spot removal that doesn't do damage uh, for minus two you can exile target creature with power four or greater uh, there's no downside to that that's incredible and it gets around like i said uh, before indestructible all right Next up, we're going to look at the non-basic lands. There aren't very many because this is a monocolored deck. We're going to start with Castle Ardenvale. Uh, enters the battlefield, taps unless you control planes. Taps for white. Uh, for, two and a, for two and two white, you can tap it to create a human creature token. Um, again, yes, it's not a soldier. I know that. Uh, next up, we have Emiria the Sky Ruin. Uh, enters the battlefield tapped at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control seven or more planes, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and you can tap it for white. Um, this is good at recurring cards creatures from your graveyard because a lot of the creatures in here are really good or they have really good etbs we got karn's bastion uh taps for colorless or you can tap four and it to proliferate uh again it's a super friend deck. you need to proliferate next up we have mist veil planes it counts as a planes um you can tap it for white uh enters the battlefield tapped uh you can pay one white and tap it to put target target card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library activate the ability only if you control two or more white permanents uh it's not super great to put it on the bottom um, because it's a hundred card format but um if you have a way to tutor it back that's great um but it also will hit just about any permanent so it hits planeswalkers everything next up we have mirrored landscape because while it enters play tapped you can tap two and sacrifice it to search for two lands to put onto the battlefield tapped um, but they have to be the same type well we only have one type in here so that works out uh, and then we have nikthos shrine to nix uh, you can tap this for colorless, or you can pay two and tap it to choose a color and add mana to your mana pool. Um, add an amount of mana pool. Add an amount of mana to your mana pool uh, equal to your devotion to that color. Uh, in mono decks, this is insane, so you should run it in most mono decks. Although it's extremely expensive. And then lastly, we're looking at basic lands. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 planes. So that is the Kithian, uh, oops, all Gideon's Super Friends Mono White deck. Um, when I wanted to build the monocolor decks, I wanted to build monocolor decks that were interesting to me. Um, I didn't want them to be something that you would see all the time from other people who build mono decks. Uh, so, you know, my mono black deck was a Sir Conrad deck that was self mill as opposed to group mill. My mono green deck was an Omnath uh, ramp tribal. My mono blue deck is a Sphinx tribal deck. My uh, mono red deck is Subira Treasures, you know, so my mono white deck, I wanted to be something unusual, and so I chose to do Super Friends and make it literally all Gideons. I've played it a couple of times. It's actually not horrible. Um, it's obviously not optimal. There are tons of better white uh, Planeswalkers that you could run, um, but this one is just fun to play. Uh, Gideon's turning into creatures is super fun, uh, and in general, it was just a blast to run this around. So, Kithian, Hero of Akros. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave those down below. Keep it positive. I'll remove negative comments. And that's kind of it, guys. Until next time, peace.